Okay, I think we're live. So, um, welcome everybody. Miracles, magic, and coffee. Uh, a, a thing that was um, yes. was was um, that uh, Don Lay and I came up with a few weeks ago when we were hanging out, and um, and we just thought we should have been filming it back then when we had a really great hangout. So um, so we're doing it now, and um, I'm going to be talking with Don Lay. So thank you, Don. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be great. So, so, um, so I've got a bunch of questions because um, Don's had this amazing experience that we'll um, have him tell us more about, and I've got question after question after question. So we'll um, try to just hey, hey, Judd, um, we'll try to just go through um, a bunch of them all. See you soon, man. <laughs> um, we're at a, um, our, my favorite coffee shop here in Bellingham, just in case you know and. Bellingham's an interesting place. Um, you can't turn without hitting some kind of energy worker or massage therapist or, or some kind of snowboarder or, or, um, or mountain biker. It's quite a town, but, um, but here we go. So let me pull up my, my things because something happened this morning that was really quite interesting. I've been so excited to do this, um, this thing with, with Don today. And so I, unlike me, I was actually preparing this time and going through lots of stuff to um, figure out what I wanted to say, and I wrote a lot of stuff down. And Don has had a what's called a need experience. So um, he's been to the other side, and he's come back. And the very first time I was in town, I went to a meeting a few years ago, and he was um, talking about it. And so it pretty much floored me, and I was like, whoa, this guy is amazing. And so, um, so as luck would have it, or God or whatever, um, I got to know Don more and more through mutual friends, and um, and so here we go. So as I was setting the space up today, I, I, um, you know, we, I don't know if you guys know, but um, Jen's dad passed away about a year ago, and quite traumatic, quite sudden, unexpected, and I check in with him to see, you know, what he's up to, and and if he can hear me, and if he can help me, and and um, and I don't know these things, so. So I was excited to talk to Don today about stuff like this. And as I was checking in, I was, um, you know, doing my meditation and listening to some stuff and and um, and thinking about it this morning. And as I was thinking about some of these questions, a little bird came up by the window and it had a broken wing and it just kind of hopped over. It didn't hit the window or anything. It walked over to about 20 feet away from me, 10 feet away from me by my window. and. Um, over the next 30 minutes, it proceeded to die. And, and as I watched it, as in, on this day that I'm going to talk to Don, I almost felt like I was watching something that I shouldn't be watching. Like, you know, this was a very private moment for it. And it was very real. And this thing was leaving. And, um, and so I wrote a little bit about it. I, I just said, there's no, there's no going about your day wondering what's for lunch worrying about this or that, planning ahead. You're dying, you're exposed, you're totally you and everyone can see. There is no hiding, you're dying. Little bird story this morning. So that's what came up and as I was hanging out, I was you know, going through like how, um, you know, we think of these coincidences in life and how does the other side talk to us and I've been, you know, it's part of my work and it's part of my training and it's part of my like try to figure out how to help people using this infinite source and and um and so one of the things i see is that there's a lot of coincidences that are very synchronous and it could possibly be how the other side talks to us and so um so all that was coming in this morning so with all that i just want to um let don do a lot of the talking today and i've got a lot of questions and i'm hoping i can just kind of like go through them and hear what you have to say, because um, because you've had some experiences that can maybe that can really help us. So, first, um, can you just give us a little bit of an idea of what life was like before you had this near death experience, and um, and just what what you know a little bit about you? <clears throat> well, I've spent the last <clears throat> nearly fifty years with the focus on spiritual aspects, for lack of a better description, and uh, taught classes and 
you know, ran a center that I had started up in Vancouver. Um, and then reached a point, and it was sort of a burnout point, and I decided that that was enough. And so walked away from that, and then uh, three, four years later, had a, a motorcycle crash, and it was quite severe. And um, I was unconscious for three days. Um, there's some interesting things about that, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I, re I remember nothing about the crash. As a matter of fact, uh, we figured out it, the last thing I remember was about 20 minutes before the crash happened. And so it wiped out the memory that I had leading up to it as well. And I was just riding my motorcycle, that's all. And then the crash happened, hit a car, head on, kind of, and um, tore my leg off, did all sorts of things. Um, and I was aware that, you know, I was aware of being on the bike, and then all of a sudden I was someplace else. And that someplace else was uh, pretty amazing. It was just um, lightness and fun. And the biggest thing for me, I guess, was there was absolutely no judgment whatsoever. And as I sat with that for the next three days, there were a lot of experiences that I had in that room. And uh, remember most of them. Um, <clears throat> And in there somewhere, I became aware um, that I need to make a need to make a decision whether or not I was going to go back into my body. And it was sort of like the question was posed. And I remember. Can I ask you who yeah. who posed the question? Well, that was the thing about this. People ask me, you know, were your guides there? Were your parents there? Were there this and that? And it's like the only way that I could describe it is there is absolutely nobody else there. And at the same time, everybody that I'd ever had any contact with whatsoever was there. I don't know, go figure. And that was my experience of it. And that question in that space, there was no separating out of individuals. Well, this one's saying this now, or this one's saying this now. Yeah, could you could you perceive, like, people in your past there, too? Uh, I was aware of them. I, I, it's not like I, I was sitting in a vast hall with all these people, <laughs> you know, and I'd look out and I'd single them out. No, it was a collective. It's a collective, okay. Yeah, and it's sort of like um, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah, and and what does that mean to you? Well, it means different things to different people, I guess. But my experience of it was, it was all just happening, and I couldn't sort of follow it intellectually. It was just something that was happening, and so this this question emerged, and um, and I I actually it sat emerged. with that for a moment. Yeah, it just sort of came out of whatever this collective was <clears throat> and so i thought about that for a bit and then i thought you know what i've finished i'm not done yet and how did you know that i just knew it did you did you have things that you had to do still did you know why you didn't have you weren't finished it it felt like there were still some things that i wanted to do that i hadn't done yet and not in the terms of, oh i want to go back so i can you know fly off to Timbuktu or something to see what that's like. No, it was on a more core level that there were things that I hadn't completed for myself and for what, for lack of a better description, what I came here to do. And did you have any sense of what you were here to do, what you were coming back to do um, besides that? Like anything, in, like anything specific? Well, that starts opening up a whole other realm because what it, what it, what that question starts to address for me is our consciousness. 
And what it felt like for me, a, a big piece of it, was to come back in and get a bigger piece of my consciousness grounded into this reality okay. and to be operating from there. And so I think of that as remembering who, in fact, you really are. And from that perspective out there, um, the, when I looked at life here and looked at all the judgments that we deal with, all the things we deal with, the word came up for me was petty. Like how <laughs> petty can you get, you know? <clears throat> and that's sort of augering down into how most of us relate on an everyday basis and um, so that you know it felt like there there were two parts of that one of why I came back or what the decision process was and part of it was around that for myself it's taking a next step that I hadn't quite been able to access cool. in spite of all the years that I've been all that because you were train, training and all that for so long yeah so, okay yeah. so so um now that you're, or what was it like, the actual coming back? Like you were there, and then you were here, and what was that transition like coming back? That moments or moments? Well, that was tricky. I mean, that that was a part of the experience for me when I made that decision that I was going to come back in. I added a caveat to it. So, so wait a second. So you could, um, you could. Um, come up with your own rules set about like, I'll come back if this, yeah. you could do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know who you were talking to? <laughs> <laughs> call it God, call it whatever you want to call it. I mean, it was like the source, it's like the the, the collective. The collective, the, okay. Who we all really are. On so you made of, this deal, like I'll come back, but. Well, it was a deal with myself. Okay, and what was your deal? And it was like, I'll, come back into the body provided I can take this vibrational level into my body and ground it through my body okay and, and be operating from that awareness or that okay consciousness. and so so now that you are so in that period when you were there and now and then you were here yeah. um, was it murky like are you in both places when you're here? Was it kind of funny coming back and now you're back in this place um, from being there? Tell me about that. Yeah, good question. Um, no murkiness. So you were clearly here when you were here. Yeah, and I, and I have a vivid memory of coming back into my body and of what that felt like for my body, bringing that vibration in. My body What did was, it feel like in your body? Um, it felt like every cell in my body was vibrating at a much quicker level quicker. and uh, more intense, more, I don't know how exactly to describe that. It was just like my body was much more alive on a cellular level. Okay, cool. You, you um, said something when I first saw you years ago when you did a talk and, um, and you described what life looked like. Um, when you came back, how did it look different to you when you were back? Well, the first thing that I remember in coming back in when my body, when I woke up, and it was first, first thing was that vibration, what that felt like in my body. And it's like, oh, okay, this is working. I'll go with this. Was it also, um, was it also like, oh my God, something hurts? Like, you know, you... We're in a car wreck, or you know, most yeah. Uh, I wasn't feeling much you pain. Were... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they they performed five surgeries on me, and this was in you know after maybe the second one or something, or and um, uh, so I was. Oh, after the wasn't second, feeling... so you had three more to go. Yeah, and uh, the first thing I remember was lying there, and with that sort of awareness. From there, that that more inclusive awareness would be one way of describing it. Was all I could do was giggle. You could giggle. Yeah, particularly around the pettiness, pettiness. and it's like how much we're sort of caught up in that. And 
I think the nurses must have thought I was a little bit batty. Must be the drugs or something. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because that's a um, similar kind of feeling I had when I saw that bird this morning um, passing away the 30 minutes. It was like nothing else, everything mattered, but nothing was like, it was, it was so real when I saw it. That's what's going on. It, there was no like looking to the future 10 minutes ahead or I'm going to make breakfast or it was <clears throat> like different. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> it's that shift. When we have a, a total shift of perspective about something, then we look mm. at something and it's like how we used to see it can be amusing if you've ever had that experience. Yeah. And so it was sort of in that that giggly space. And that went on oh. for weeks. Do you still have that? Do you still have that perception of how petty everything else is and, and how... Um... Yeah. Okay, 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 gotcha. <laughs> I thought you might. Let me see. Uh, do you, let's see. I'm gonna look. Through, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and there's there's <clears throat> for me there there's a diciness to that as well. Um, how can I describe it? It's it's like <clears throat> when we have a new realization of something. Would you call that the truth, or what would you call that? That new realization. I, I don't know. I can't, I can stay away from words that are that. Mm, okay. Know. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, you know what I okay, mean. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, and it it's like um, what was I talking about? Um, a new realization. <laughs> oh, the realization. Um, <clears throat> well, I sort of lost it there now. Oh, sorry about that. that. It'll come. Um, okay. Anyway, I, I've got a question. Um, yeah, hopefully that comes back. Sorry to interrupt. So um, when you were on the other side, could you or did you um, notice everybody else here in this plane, like the physical plane? And if you could notice them, could they hear, could you hear what they were, if they were to ask you something, could you know it? And could you something where when you're on the other side, can you help people that are still here? You know, that didn't even occur to me. Didn't and so I, can't, I guess I can't answer that. Okay. I mean, you know, from... Because, you know, a lot of people um, talk to their dead grandma or right. talk to other people and get help from them. And we hear stories of, like, um, you know, synchronicities where you think, oh, that's so-and-so talking to me. Um, yeah. Any, anything about that? Well, I don't have any problem with any of that. I mean, after all, that's the stuff that I've worked with for all these years. <laughs> And um, um, <clears throat> I guess I could say there there was a level contained within that space to where that sort of thing would just be a given. It'd be a given. Yeah, okay. We're we're you know one way of putting it is we are all in this together. We're here to help and support each other. And on that level, it was very direct. It was the things that we're dealing with here are body things, okay? And like somebody, how to get more money, how to live a better life, how to get out of pain, how to get a girlfriend, how yeah, to get a boyfriend. Yeah, all the, all the body dynamics. And, and on that other level, it's all um, they accompli. It, it's, it's done. Would yeah. you say there's, there's um, like, We've heard about um, time is different on the other side. And so um, have, have all those things already happened? And there's money versions of this? Or um, like, you know, um, when you say it's already done, <laughs> I, 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 um, how do I ask this? Like, so here we are in the here and now, physical, and people want stuff you know they want a better life they want to get out of pain they want to heal from this they want more money they want to have a different life that they're living um, is if you is there any kind of sense of like there's different the, the, all that's there and is it accessible like can you change things because of um, where you've been now can you see that oh wow there's a way to to play with this or to like use this is it useful yeah um 
I guess one way of responding to that is within that space, first of all, there's no time. <clears throat> no sense of time, at least for me, there wasn't. Um, other than, okay, it's time to go back. To time know, go whatever back. that means. <laughs> but, but it's like there's no lack there. And what most people are oh. looking that for here is a you know, basic thing that most people want to say want to be loved. So they're seeking love. Okay, let's put it that way. <clears throat> and mm. when you're in that space, it's just unlimited. It's not a question. It's just there. So some people are wanting um, certain things in this life. And it, when you break it down to what it's really about, it's a version of that will mean that I'm loved. <laughs> like if I could do this or if I could have that or things could happen for me. Shows yeah, that that, that's just, that's, yeah, that can be um, a key part of it. Uh, I don't deserve love. If I don't deserve love, I don't deserve anything. What kind of love was it? Like um, people talk about unconditional love. But... You know, again, I have a hard time putting words on it, but yeah, that kind of fits. It was just, that's what it was. Were you love? You're, just... you're not separate from me. No, just bathed in it. You just are that. It's like sort of experiencing, shall we say, that part of you, which contains all that you could ever want. On experiencing any level. All, wow, that's a cool way to say it. I'll yeah. have to rewind that and write that down. Yeah, and the and the you know uh, the bottom line of it, I guess, is <clears throat> how do we how do we blend? Um, should we say these two universes? That's a good way to put it. These two different states of being, and one of them is one of those states is that you're functioning as a body, okay? And then there's the other piece of us or the other part of us that our consciousness is open to it to a certain degree, but maybe not as open as it could be as to who it is that's here experiencing this. This isn't a body personality. That part of us is experiencing what it's like to be in this, okay? So we get all caught up in the everyday things here about how we're supposed to be, what is, you know, how much money you got, are you good impressing people, are you, do you look right, blah, 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 blah. And it's like on that side, None of that matters because we all kind of look the same in some way. We're, we're all a reflection of this very we're all a reflection. Uh, uh, potent field of love, whatever you want to call it, acceptance, non-judgment. Um, okay. and, and so coming into this dimension, um, it's not about one overriding the other. This dimension has been really good at overriding that dimension. Oh, got it. Okay, and so where do we get the balance here? Where can we be both? How can I be both places at once? Yeah, do you, now that you're back, do you experience fear or anxiety or depression? Uh, no, I'm fully enlightened now. Of course, <laughs> I don't experience any of that. That's the, you know, the... In, part of it is embracing what was there and integrating that here means getting the body used to operating on a different frequency to where it's not just physical. It's everything else. You can still experience all the things. I could experience fear. I could experience, you know, whatever. But I'm finding that hugely uh, reduced. Okay, so the, the experience charge. of it is less. Oh, the charge of it. How about um, joy or happiness? Is that different since you're back? It's it's uh, quite accessible. <laughs> <laughs> any any um, pointers for people wanting to ex access that? Um, yeah, the first thing that I'd like to say about that, I think, is um, it's not necessary to go through a near death experience to have that. That's good to know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't particularly recommend what I did um, as a way of going about it. And yet it was a jolt for me in such a way um, that in coming back, 
it took everything that I'd been working with and studying with and playing with people with for all these years and just grounded it. It mm. made it, it just made it so much more real because now I've been there and I've been there in certain degrees uh, over all these years. I could sit down and meditate and I could go out of my, body. I could do this, whatever, whatever. It wasn't quite the same. It didn't, it had, didn't. Do you still feel the need to meditate or to do those other um, things you did for those 50 years? Um, what I would like to say with that, I guess, is it's more like reminding myself, tuning back in. Oh, you, oh. Okay, but that, that state is there. That's where I talk about being there here at the same time. It's like, I know that state, I've been there. <clears throat> you know, I've been to your house, I can find your house again. I mean, it's that simple. Oh, I see. I've so you can there. go. You oh, so you. And it's not you've been there. Yeah, I got it. I mean, meant at least I got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you've been there, because in in my work, um, I use that for myself. If I've been in a certain state, and magic has happened, miracles, people have had different things where conditions go away or, or they get better, I can access that because I've I've been there before. And so one of the, my motivations for talking with you was, okay, you've been there in in that that state on the other side that you've been describing, and now you're telling me um, something super exciting to me because you said you can go there now. You've been there. And so that's my one of my um, motivations for today was to say, okay, let's, um, how about we all go there and experience that, you know, because we can do that. that that's part of you worked for 50 years even before you went and my work now is to give people <clears throat> um, a way to tune into something that then can have a, a profound effect for them so they have a, a life they want or like or or something yeah. but um so so if you can tell us anything about like um any anything about you going there or you told me something before about how people see you now and and um just being around you, they feel a certain way. They get different, like happier, better. They just feel different just being around you, but I don't think you're doing anything. So can you tell me more about like accessing that state, um, going to that, that place you've been, and and maybe we can um, help people feel that even right now. And um, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> Probably a thousand different ways you can look at it. So I've always thought of it as just my vibrational frequency. Anybody that's worked with their energy for a while knows that they can shift the vibration. They can take it up, they can take it down. And you'll experience this in your encounters with people. You're dealing with somebody that's dealing with some real heavy duty things. And if you start matching that, you can feel your energy just start to dive. And by the same token, if you're talking with people that are really wide open, you can start taking it up and taking it up and taking it up. And a lot of this just sort of happens automatically. Right. You're around people and you feel, you start to feel either happy or, or sad, depending on how the group is feeling. Yeah. And so the, the point of that is, yeah, I can feel that, but that's not me. You know, I may have that aspect in myself, but I've addressed that so I'm familiar with it. Doesn't mean it's all gone, doesn't mean anything other than, oh, okay, this is the vibration of this group that I'm dealing with right now. So a lot of my work with groups tended to be around getting them to a place to where they'd allow themselves to go someplace other than where they were at at the moment, okay. consciously. Cool. And, and what I, you know, uh, when you describe your work to me, it's like, what I like about it is it doesn't need to make sense. It's just happening and how much can I trust that? And I think that's a key for everybody. Can you really trust yourself? You don't even know yourself, you know, to a certain degree. We only know what we know and what we don't know, we don't know. And so it's, it's sort of opening up to where we can have experiences that are outside of the box of how we've been trained to view ourselves and learning to trust that. That's part of ourselves trying to manifest outward. That okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, 
so I might ask everybody um, if they want, if if they were um, willing and, and ready to trust themselves and um, and experience more of themselves, um, how might that look for them now? And what I'd like to check in with Don is um, can um, even, I don't know how to ask, but it's almost like asking for everything. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, um, could you access that space um, like at, at will? Can you do it now? Would you do it now? Um, I, we could all like um, experience it somehow or, you know, the, the, the yoga, the deep yogi people would um, go into a state and then their, their disciple would feel, feel that and in, in that infinite, whatever that is. We've heard about that, that autobiography of a yogi, you know, yeah. but, um, um, anything would you be up for like um, experiencing that now or are you experiencing it now or can we experience it now <laughs> <laughs> well I've been playing with this ever since we got here <laughs> and it's uh, yeah I can, I can be there and, I, and let me drink a little cup of coffee yeah um, so and it's largely a matter of oh god how can i put this <laughs> for anybody um it's that question of will i let myself go here and you may feel it you may not feel it. It may be more of a natural state for some people than other people. And it's like, what I'm aware of when that starts getting hit, and maybe this can be a little indicator, I'm dealing with, you're sitting here next to me, but I'm aware that we're communicating on a totally different level than just on a body level. There's a transfer happening back and forth in information exchange and awareness exchange and all that sort of thing. So um, we're all a piece of this big puzzle and we've got our own ways of going about solving the puzzle we get, but we're, we're, we need to let our, the piece that we are settle into its own space that's what i'm getting with with this it's, i'm getting a um something that um yeah something like we can't do this wrong like quit quit trying <laughs> to get too um too worried about am i going to do this right can i do this now yeah. um it, it, what i'm getting is um you can't do this wrong so um so let's just relax <laughs> yeah and, and i might add to that it, it's about letting yourself experience whatever you experience that there is like you say there's no right or wrong here it's just simply what do you experience particularly if you've had any practice with shutting all the noise down that goes on in the brain and just let ourselves experience something Mm. Um, just let ourselves experience it. Yeah, and f feel like what that feels like in the body. Um, you know, for me, it's it's much easier to sort of be both places at once when I'm not trying to talk a lot. Yeah, and that's yeah. That quietness. Thing. Yeah, I um, I'm reminded of that bird this morning. Like um, it was experiencing what it was experiencing, and you couldn't um. There was no noise. There was no noise. It was, um, it was passing on, and there was no noise. Yeah. It was like right here and now. So, uh, not that, not that we want to feel that right now, like that. But, but you know what I mean. Like, um, um, it seems like that's what's interesting to me about this state that you were in is that, um, how to, and yet you talk about joy because it sounds like, oh my God, that sounds so scary. But, um, but then it's like this joy and unconditional love thing so it's like um yeah and i would like to um to just play with it now in a way that um whoever is ready to experience something that might be useful for them today so that they have a reference for it later and they could um know more of who they are whenever they want 
um, it might be something useful for somebody. Yeah, and um, oddly, I'm, I've never thought of it in this way before, but <clears throat> one way to sort of tune into that, um, perhaps for some people, is just allowing themselves to start to become aware of the communication that's going on right now as you're listening to this between you and me and Ralph that's on a, um, on a being level. It's beyond the body. We're always communicating um, one way or another when we come together. And a lot of that communication is taking place outside of the thinking, oh, gotcha. you know, kind of place. And when I sometimes watching you do your work, it's like there's a communication that's happening someplace else. Mm -hmm. And so at least that's the way I experience it. And so it's letting ourselves be more and more aware of that um, with other people and right now and just see what that frequency feels like because there's a frequency in that communication. It's like um, there's sound waves and then there's these other waves or something. So let yourself, um, it's just something to play with. And and, and I'm, I'm noticing it now. I mean, I can, um, like, I think sometimes, you know, like if you're, if you've got a TV on, but you're not noticing it, and it's just a bunch of noise and other noise in the room. And then um, and then something comes on the TV and you're like, oh, whoa. And you notice it. Because what I'm noticing right now is I, um, I'm experiencing it. I'm feeling it. And it's something that I'm, I'm, um, I, I want to just check in with everybody right now. And just you might want to just kind of um, notice for a moment um, what you are noticing. So, <clears throat> so that sounds a little funny. But, um, but you might want to just take a moment and... Um, and notice what you're noticing because I actually um, notice this right now and with my work sometimes I do stuff to get in this state but what I've noticed right now it just kind of showed up so um, so for the next moment um, let's all if you want um, notice what you notice so hang on a second and I'll, I'll look at some more questions <laughs> okay It's like station identification. <laughs> okay, I've got another question. So, so you might be noticing what you're feeling and, um, and it'll be cool, leave comments. I, we're not looking at the comments right now, but leave comments of what you're noticing, what you're feeling. Um, click like, click share. Um, you know, everybody likes likes, everybody likes shares. Even Don, you know, besides <laughs> likes, likes. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, um, click like, click share, um, write us a comment of what you're feeling. And, um, and my next question is, um, some people have reported miraculous, complete healings of, um, you know, terminal diseases when they come back from the other side. And with, um, I know, you know, you've, you're still dealing with some physical stuff, you know, orthopedic type things from, from the accident. Um, did you have a choice to come back um, completely like, wow, I'm like a 17 year old again? Or do you tell, talk about like, how do you deal with life struggles now and your physical health? And, and did you have a choice or was, what do you tell us anything about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that brings up a, <clears throat> an experience I had in the hospital and, um, uh, talk about that for a minute. I guess I, I awakened in the middle of the night one night, <coughs> and mind you, my leg was still had bolts screwed into it with brace and hold it in, in place while they were putting everything back together. And I awakened in the middle of the night one night, and I was totally, totally tangled up in my bed sheets, and I. I thought, how did that happen? I couldn't even roll over. Oh, wow. And so 
then the next thing I became aware of was the nurse that was trying to untangle me and got me all straightened out and laid the sheet back over me and everything. And I, I sort of let that go. And then the next night, exactly the same thing happened. And I remember thinking at that time, what the hell is this all about? And then I realized, and I started giggling, and I was going to get up and walk out of there. You know, I was dead set on I wasn't going to stay in that hospital any longer. I was just going to go home. There's no reason why this can't happen. And at that point, <clears throat> I remember something clicking in, in my mind. And it was like, you know, if you can't pull this off, you may create more damage than there already is. <laughs> and I kind of went, oh, and, I, and I made a decision at that point. And I, and I remember the words that I came up with. I need to let this be organic, let the whole thing heal itself as naturally as I can. And that may take a while, but I'm okay with that. And so if had my belief structure maybe been a little bit further, maybe, you know, it would have been a shock for the nurses to see me walking out of there. I don't know. That, that was my next question was, um, were the doctors and nurses beliefs um, in any way responsible for not a complete um, orthopedic recovery yet? I mean, you're, you've done amazingly well in your back, yeah. but... Um, but Anything related to that? Well, the doctor, uh, the lead surgeon who was handling my leg, um, <clears throat> when he got all finished with the final surgery, I remember standing him, at the, him standing at the end of my bed, and he was good natured. Had, we had a nice relationship, and he's sort of smiling, and he said, "Well." at least you'll have a leg to stand on. <laughs> and that's all he would say. He wasn't going to say I was ever going to be able to walk again or anything else. It's like, but I would be able to stand on this. Thing. I like that. I like, you got a joke. In, in, it, it's useful. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, they didn't, they didn't know if I'd be able to walk again. They wouldn't predict that. They wouldn't predict much of anything. And... Um, <clears throat> So the healing work since then um, has been exactly the way I said that I wanted it to be. I wanted yeah. it to be organic and I, you know, let it take its time. And so it continues to improve a little bit. Yeah, change. yeah, yeah. Could I have speeded that up? Can I speed that up now? Well, every once in a while I have these experiences. Um, on another level, I'll wake up in the morning and realize that I was out there somewhere and my knee was bending totally full on down, just like it always used to. And Like in the nighttime, when you're yeah, just like with the sheets in the middle of the night. Yeah, when you're in that semi-awake state, you're in between oh, right. waking. And, and it's like, oh, okay, this is, I guess it's heading in the right direction, but it's like... Uh, where does the healing take place? Yeah. It takes place oftentimes on these other levels first. Like how is this useful for you right now? Yeah. Maybe it's useful. Yeah. And, and it, when we experience healing on that level, then we need to adjust our way of thinking about it. Shall we say we need got, to adjust our yeah. our mentality in order to accommodate that? In other words, we can yeah, explain yeah, that. Yeah, I out. got it. Yeah, so so brings me to a question. Um, if we're possibly asking, are we asking the wrong questions when it comes to like, okay, I want to heal this, or I want more money here, or I want to be able to live like this? Are we asking the wrong questions about this? If it were, if people aren't getting exactly what they think they want, and if we are asking the wrong questions, what would be the best question to ask? Or is there a question to ask? Or, or do you ask questions to this thing? <laughs> oh, God. Well, the, to me, that's part of what we're playing with right now. It's highlighted now more than it has been in my entire life in terms of just what's going on with society and people's interest in, you know, the, the very fact that science is starting to validate some of what we've been doing all this time. 
Um, and so the, 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 I don't see any uh, simple, single answer at all, but I think everybody's going about it in their own way and they need to find their own way. Mm. And I can describe some of my process. My process isn't their process. And, you know, they might get some useful information from it, but it's like the, the crux of the whole matter here for me, when I touch that space and I'm aware of the incredible capabilities that we have, that we don't let ourselves experience because we've been told it doesn't exist or we've told we're limited, you know, you're, you've done this wrong, whatever it has, all of those things okay. that just keep us from being free wheeling. Okay, so, this is awesome. And this is gonna be um, perfect. I'd love to talk to Don. We'll, we'll, we'll hang out again. Part two will be coming. <laughs> The ongoing miracles of magic and coffee, but um, I I think this is a really good time to um, to start to wrap it up, but in a really cool way. Because what comes to me is um, can uh, you know how you do the the out music and let me let's have this song take us out. Um, can you um, take us to that space or can you go to that space now where um, people have that um, infinite abilities or whatever that you talked about like you know yeah and it can happen in any way that's useful for you but can you take us out for the um funny way to say it take us out <laughs> but can you take us out um in the next minute or so um uh, and so that people can experience this for themselves in whatever way is useful for them um can we go there now and i'll just i'll just um leave it at that sure <clears throat> and um Again, I'll just suggest what I suggested before, tuning into that level where we're communicating on a different level. Here, now, not going out to something, but being present with that reality. And we've all learned through our lives to match other people's energy, so to speak, you know, with their vibrational level. So... And so I'm playing with that. Just let yourself um, sort of match that. And it's outside of thinking and all that sort of thing, but just being there now and uh, see what you experience. Mm. And as, as long as you're we're playing with that a little bit, also you just might want to be aware of what Ralph is doing on that level. Those of you that are used to tuning in to the work that he does, and he's always doing that work. And so just letting yourself receive on that level as well. And yeah, and um, that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, I definitely feel something and um, it's quite profound. And so um, I'd be very interested to hear what you guys are noticing and what synchronicity is coming in for you right now and over the, the rest of the day. And um, the information can be anywhere, seems to be what Don's saying too. And, and, um, and as I've been sitting here this whole hour, I didn't notice it till just a second ago. And there's two really beautiful roses in a little glass on a table. And I don't know what that means, but I, <laughs> think it means something so you might look around and see what things um, are going on in your world and what you're noticing and and um, and let us know <clears throat> what you feel um, what's going on and we'll do another one of these because Don and I both like coffee <laughs> <laughs> anything else you any last words Don and well, I, I I find this really fun in terms of what I'm noticing right now uh, seem to be noticing is how so many different disciplines are trying to come together. And it's like, it's not this way is right, this way is wrong, or anything else. It's like, I think it's really important that we continue this sort of uh, communication and be aware of that with everything around us. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, you guys, um, comment, like, share, and, um, and if you like this, let us know and we'll do some more. Okay, we'll thank probably you. do some more anyway. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ralph. This oh, thank you, Don. Yeah, this is yeah. awesome, man. Okay. okay, let's see how to turn this puppy off.